Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Garlic aioli. I think that's how you say it. Acai or acai. Anything goat cheese related. A lot of beet things. These are all food trends. I actually don't like goat cheese and I don't like beets. But don't worry, that's not gonna be in this dish. One of the most popular things that I've seen lately are these things called birria or quesabiria tacos. Now, after trying a quesabiria taco, I fully get it. We're talking a taco that's typically done with goat meat, but I'm not using goat meat here. Not that I have anything against goat meat, but it's not as accessible to find, unless you're really at a kind of Greek market, I guess, typically, which I actually have plenty of access to in Astoria, but I'm giving you options. You can use chuck, brisket, or short ribs. The thing that makes a birria taco so special is the consomme that it creates, and then you basically soak a corn tortilla in this consomme, put it in a frying pan when it's done, add the meat and any toppings you want, all the fixins, and then when you fold it over, it's a little bit crispy from this amazing deliciousness that's seeped and baked into the, uh, the tortilla, and then you dip it in more consomme. You can listen, I can just talk about this forever, but let's just do it in the Instant Pot in less than 10 ingredients. Beef birria tacos, or queso birria tacos. Watch the magic happen. All right, so the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna get about four ounces of dried ancho chilies. You can also use guajillo chilies. Now, if you can't find these in your market, you can easily get them online. That's where I got these. Uh, about four ounces. Sometimes they come in five ounce bags too, that's fine. What I wanna do is I wanna remove them from the bag, and then I wanna just take a pair of scissors here, or kitchen shears, snip off the top, and then just open up each chili and then get the seeds out and put them in a bowl. All right, so just like, so basically just give them a little bit of a brisk. There we go, seeds in the bowl. Okay, and there we have it. There are my chilies that are all nice and now empty because I de-stemmed and de-seeded them. Just pour all the seeds in a bowl, I'll discard that. And for those asking, no, these are not spicy. Sometimes hearing the word chili can be freaky to people or scare them off. But I can tell you right now, they're not spicy if you use ancho. Guajillo, a slightly bit more, but ancho, you're very mild here. And again, you can get these easily online. All right, let's move on. Now we wanna focus on our meat, which is obviously the key ingredient of this recipe, and not gonna have some tacos without some delicious meat. Now, as I said, traditionally, this recipe is made with goat meat, but I know that's not super available to everybody, and you're gonna have three options. You can either go with a chuck roast, which is what I have here, same thing I'd use for pot roast. I get this at Costco, about three to five pounds. You could also use some bone-in short ribs or a brisket. It all depends on what you want. You have three options. I'm going with a chuck. And then I have seasonings here that I want to season it up with. A tablespoon each of chili powder, cumin or cumin, depends on how you want to pronounce it, and seasoned salt or an adobo seasoning. Either the seasoned salt or adobo seasoning, don't use both. Take like a fork and just swirl that around. Look at that. It looks just like sand art. Remember sand art when you put it in a bottle? Yeah, fun times. I remember those birthday parties. Might always look the worst. And now we're going to take our roast, or any of our meat, whatever we're using, and we're going to coat it inside of our seasonings here. And when we're looking like this, and we're pretty much coated, we are good to go. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be to give us a little bit of a sear in the Instant Pot. All right, now to my Instant Pot, I have two options. I can either add in three tablespoons of salted butter or three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Whichever you wanna use is totally up to you. Using the olive oil will keep it dairy free, but I like to add some butter to this. In my opinion, personally, I think it gives it a slightly more flavorful edge, but again, not necessary. Now we're gonna melt the butter in the pot by giving it the saute function. So I'm gonna come down to my control panel and hit the saute button and adjust so I'm on the more or high setting. If your button, if your pot is a start button, hit that. If it doesn't, it'll start on its own. All right, now once my butter is melted, I'm going to add the roast in the pot, and I'm gonna sear it on each side for about 45 seconds to a minute, very quickly. Now I'm just gonna give it a flip to the other side. All right, get the edges as well. All right, once I've seared it on all sides, I'm just gonna put it back on that plate. Again, it's a flash sear that looks perfect. And now I'm gonna come down to my pot, and I'm gonna add in 12 cloves of garlic that I just sliced in half, as well as a Spanish onion, or you could use a yellow onion that I just sliced long ways into strands about a quarter inch thick. And then I'm gonna saute that in the pot for a few minutes, 
You're gonna see the bottom of the pot's gonna be kind of caked on from the seasonings, that's fine. As we saute our uh, onion, it's going to release juices. And we'll be able to get that up and deglaze in just a moment. I'm gonna saute the onion and the garlic for about five minutes. All right, and after about five minutes of sauteing our onion, we're good. You can still see the bottom's a little bit caked on. That's all about to change. We're gonna pour in two cups of beef broth to the pot. And then I want to make sure that I deglaze the bottom, making sure that everything's nice and clear. Just get in there with a wooden spatula, which is my favorite thing to use when I'm basically mixing in the Instant Pot. And you'll be able to see that everything's going to come up very easily. The bottom will be nice and smooth. You see that? Well, it's hard to see because there's some broth in there. But look, if I tilt it, you see that? Nice and smooth, just like that. That's how we want it. All throughout. Now I just want to slide my roast right back into the pot. Let it sit on top of the onion. And then we're going to add those ancho chilies on top. And sprinkle some oregano throughout the sides, just like that. Now we're ready to pressure cook. And it was very simple. To secure my lid, make sure that it's in the sealing position, the valve here. Now we'll come back down to the control panel, hit the cancel button. And I want to now hit the pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. And for this, and for chuck roast, I want to go for 60 minutes, guys. That's full 60 minutes at high pressure. Hit that start button again. Now, um, if you're using the short ribs of the brisket, I will specify those cook times in the written recipe itself. Just check the link in the video description to get to that. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna allow a 15 minute natural release, meaning we do nothing for 15 minutes. This is gonna count up, and when that reads 15, we'll finish it off with a quick release. And now that 15 minutes of a natural release have passed, I'm gonna finish this off with a quick release. And actually the pin dropped on its own. That might happen, and that's totally normal. So let's take the lid off. All right, so now I wanna take some tongs and I wanna remove the ancho chilies that are now gonna be like reconstituted. They're not gonna be hard and leathery anymore. And put them in a food processor or a blender. And now I wanna take my roast, which is gonna be very tender. You can use some tongs. You know what, I'm gonna use pitchfork thingamajig. Lovely. And I'm going to put it in a relatively large bowl because I'm going to shred this in just a moment. And I also want to take a slotted spoon and try to get as many of the onions out of there as well and put them in the bowl with the meat. Same with the garlic. All right. And once you have most of that out of there, you're good. All right. Now let's focus on the rest of our broth. I want to take a ladle and take about a cup of it and put it inside of a bowl here. And then add another cup of it to a measuring cup or whatever. And I'm going to pour that into the food processor. On, and I'm going to just blend this up and we are looking wonderful look at that what? made a little bit of a mess look at that gorgeous all right so let's set that aside for the time being and come back to our meats we're gonna take just two forks I have relatively large ones you could also use like a hand mixer for this I'm just gonna shred the meat apart it's gonna happen very easily here because it's so tender Fabulous. Okay, now it is time to take this puree right here from the ancho chilies, and we're going to take a fine mesh strainer and then put the puree into the strainer. This is very similar to the pozole recipe, my pozole rojo. And then just press down on the puree so all the drippings go through the strainer. The part that's thicker and it's not straining onto the meat are actually the skins of the chilies. You could absolutely add those two if you'd like. And then you see, once we look like this underneath, all those drippings are caught, we are good. I'm gonna mix that in with my meat. And then mix everything together. And here's the meat for our tacos. Gorgeous. And if you want a little bit more broth in there, we have plenty. Feel free to add more. You see the colors going on here? How beautiful that is? And how tender this beef looks? Absolutely stunning. All right. Now we're gonna make the tacos. Now I'm going to take a large saucepan and preheat it to like a medium high. And when the pot's hot, I'm going to take the consomme, which is that one cup of broth from the pot that I removed. This doesn't have the ancho chilies in it, the puree. And I wanna take my corn tortillas. Corn tortillas are important for this, guys. Use corn. Um, I probably actually normally like flour tortillas, but for this corn, soak one side of it in there. Well, it's okay if you get some of the other, but only one side's necessary, and then place it inside of the saucepan. You can usually get about two or three of them going at once. And while those are in the saucepan, add a little bit of the meat to it. I'm using my hands, but they're clean. You don't have to do that. And then maybe top it with some onion, some cheese if you want and really let it cook on there for about two minutes. We want to make sure that the shell, or I should say the corn tortilla, 
uh, it gets a little bit of a cooking situation going on there. We want the consomme to be like ingrained into it. All right, and then we're going to fold it over after a minute and look at how beautiful that is. Look at that. Leave it on its side and then take your tacos and then put them on a plate. And then just repeat the process for as many as you want to make. Simple as that. And then you can feel free to put a few more red onion on top if you want. Maybe some cilantro even. However you want to do it. If you don't like cilantro, you don't have to add it. You can also chop it up a little more finely than I did. But whatever you do, make sure you have some of that consomme to dip this in. Because that's what it's all about. Okay, and we are now ready to serve this up. Let's try it out. I'm so excited. And I'm genuinely very excited for this. Look at this beauty. I can't believe I made this myself. Here we go. Mm. That is ridiculously delicious. Wow. Mm. Mm. The tenderness of this meat, the flavor of it, the ancho chili puree mixed in with the amazing broth, the consomme, everything that's mixed in with the meat, and then dipping it in the additional consomme, Next level. And this was done so simply, so easily. Yes, there is a few, you know, a few back and forth with the food processor at the chilies and the, it, you know, honestly, it's so easy to do. It's very much a set it and forget it situation here and it's under 10 ingredients to make. You know, when it comes down to making tacos that traditionally take all day to make, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all to have this done in rapid light speed, basically. And you can top us however you want. You want some guacamole? Great. Sour cream? Go for it. Do whatever you want. I like the cheese, the red onion, and the cilantro. Do you want a good cookbook for your Instant Pot and you're not sure where to start? You've just found the best cookbooks for your Instant Pot as they fall out of my hand. Uh, I'm biased. I wrote them. I did. But I have three of them. The orange one, the blue one, which is lighter, and the yellow one, which is comfort food. The orange one is also basically a lot of classic dishes. Um, every single recipe in all my books and all of them that's what they're known for, the signature item here is that there are step-by-step -step color photos for every step of the way, as well as a finished shot of what every recipe will look like. As an, and a timing bar, there's no guesswork. Literally all the guessing gone, out of the equation. Go to facebook.com slash pressurelockcooking, like the page and check any other, you know, other things out there that you might want to see. And at pressurelockcooking on YouTube and all the other social stuff, Instagram. Thank you again, my friends. And I'm just going to leave it at this. Birria tacos. The whole plate's already gone. There were a lot more earlier, but uh, kind of ate a couple. Might have to have a couple more. Enjoy. Look at this. Mm. Mm. Look at that. Mm.